It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and this morning we're covering all the latest developments in breast cancer research, treatment, and prevention. Here with everything you need to know is medical oncologist and the director of breast cancer uh, clinical research at NYU Langone, Dr. Na Dr. Nancy Chan. Dr. Chan, hey, thank you for you? joining us. Thank Welcome you. back to the show. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, what are the latest uh, statistics on breast cancer? Is it on the rise? Is it in a holding pattern? What do we know? Right, breast cancer incidence is on the rise. So for example, in the past decade, the incidence or number of new cases of breast cancer in the U.S. have been increasing by about 1% per year. This increase is higher for younger women, about 1.4 person per year. What, what? And this is thought to be multifactorial. Yeah, what, yeah why? What, why? What's, what's, what's causing this? So there are different factors, for example, lifestyle, environmental exposure, delaying childbirth, um, and your underlying genetic predisposition and higher body weight all contribute to breast cancer risk. And what are some of the most common risk factors that women should look out for? So some of the more modifiable risk factors mm -hmm. I like to highlight are what we're eating, the diet that mm. we um, every day are putting into our bodies. Processed foods are directly linked to increasing breast cancer risk, for example. Smoking and alcohol also contribute as increased risk for breast cancer, mm -hmm. even small amounts of alcohol. So now we recommend no more than one drink per day, but even less is better. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what can women do to risk, risk, uh, reduce the risk of breast cancer? Right, so starting to empower ourselves with knowledge about our bodies and breast cancer risk is the first step, dispelling the fear that surrounds breast cancer. So for example, majority of breast cancer are actually diagnosed as stage zero or stage one. Mm -hmm. So early stage, highly curable, and hopefully that can dispel some of the fear that comes with breast cancer screening. Then women could be less nervous and actually go get their mammograms on time every year. And also with the dietary changes, for example, um, cutting out some of the breast, um, some of the processed meats, right. mm -hmm. um, especially can increase risk. And although smoking is not rising, but vaping are rising in younger women. And the, there are increasing studies that show that there may be a related increased risk for breast cancer. Wow. More studies are being done. The aerosol, um, aerosolized, I, um, components can lead to DNA damage, for example. Mm. So maybe um, something to pay attention yeah, to. Yeah, we've been hearing a lot about these GLP-1s every day, yes. there's new news. Is there any evidence that that could be decreasing the chances of breast cancer? So there's been a lot of large observational studies with GLP-1 inhibitors. They are very effective in helping women to lose weight. So indirectly can have protective forces against breast cancer. There are more studies that are studying the direct and um, anti-inflammatory effect of GLP-1 inhibitors on breast cancer risk. And what about mammograms and the data on that? Like how often should women get them? What is the age now where they should start get, at getting them? Right, so the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force just lower the age recommended for screening from 50 to 40. Wow. wow. This is now aligned with American Cancer Society, with the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, or NCCN. So multiple societies have been recommending 40 as the age for annual screening, but now everyone is aligned, which means that insurances usually will have to pay for screening at 40. Some women may need screening at even earlier, depending on their own personal and family histories. Wow, thank you for that. More on breast cancer prevention with Dr. Chen when we come back. We're back with Dr. Nancy Chan, and she's sharing the latest updates on breast cancer prevention and treatment. What's your advice on self-exams? How often should women be doing that? Right, so I think, again, going back to getting to know our bodies, our own norm. Mm -hmm. um, our body changes, especially for menstruating women, month to month, as you know. So setting a timer on your phone, doing it at the sa around the same time each mm. month is helpful. Mm. I also always tell my patients, actually, you need to see as much as touch. So stand in front of the mirror, 
and look at any asymmetry that's new. A lot of time women will always have some asymmetry that's baseline for them, but something that's new, a little pulling on the skin or a change in the contour of your breast may not feel like a mess, but sometimes those are the key um, alarms that you need to bring to your doctor's attention. Have there been any, any advancements in early, early detection technology? So there has been a lot actually. One of the more important is incorporating AI assistance and mammograms mm. that has improved um, some of the sensitivities in detecting breast wow. cancer. Yeah, our little helpers. Mm -hmm. But we still need our breast radiologists. They are the ones who are um, generating new technologies such as contrast enhanced mammography. This is really impressive technology which highlights areas of um, increased blood flow. This is often a hallmark of cancer mm. that sometimes may be hiding in dense breast tissue as well. And so that can increase the sensitivity of a screening mammogram to almost as good as an MRI. All of these advancements must have uh, impacted the survivability and early detection rates. Absolutely. So detecting breast cancer earlier leads to higher rates of cure and so improvement in survival. So mm. that's why getting better at screening and catching these tiny little breast cancers that can be easily treated will cause survival. How benefit. about advancement in, in cancer treatment, breast cancer treatment? Absolutely. So that's what I love to do. It's the love of my life. Um, asking your doctors about clinical trials, novel therapies that mm. may be applicable to you as a cancer patient. We are using now genomic tools, there are so many, to personalize treatments for you wow. during cancer treatment and also utilizing targeted therapies and immunotherapy in some cancers to improve the effectiveness of your treatment and also lowering side effects. That's really our goal is to improve the quality of life of women who are being treated with, for breast cancer. Wow, this is really important yeah. information. Thank you so much for being here. For this information, head to our website. We'll be right back.